Africa's health challenges are as diverse as its people. Tackling them needs coordinated efforts. The Africa Public Health Foundation started operations in a context marked by the devastating COVID-19 pandemic with Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Africa CDC, playing a key and leading role in the continent's containment efforts. The situation required an appropriate response from Africa Public Health Foundation to secure funding. Africa Public Health Foundation's mandate is to forge partnerships and mobilize resources to support critical public health initiatives led by Africa CDC. Uh, the creation of Africa CDC was a major achievement in the continent and there was a major step forward by the heads of state of the African continent because we have been through bad experiences, uh, uh, repeated experiences of uh, pandemics, and other health emergencies, and we were not properly organized in order to get a coordinated effort for the whole continent to deal with these uh, bad situations. So the creation of uh, Africa CDC and its uh, start of activities in 2017 was a major mark for the African Union. Africa CDC as a premier health agency is there to support the effort of the government to build resilient health security systems in, in a very unique way to ensure that each country they have a functional uh, the national public health institutions which is well equipped, with a well trained and have the necessary uh, ability to bring all the public health assets in each country into the same platform with the surveillance of the workforce, research, preparedness and response. And uh, we as APHF were created as an organization to support Africa CDC. Uh, mainly to provide a platform for partnerships and collaboration of several partners with Africa CDC and mostly to mobilize resources for the programs of Africa CDC. I would say that health systems in Africa are set to benefit from the Africa CDC's work and that's because it's an Africa-owned agenda and APHF is here really in service of Africa CDC. So we can add value to Africa CDC by mobilizing resources, doing things differently in a way that an independent and agile foundation can. The issue of the community healthcare workers is a critical. We have seen it during the COVID in some of the specific area contact tracings. Uh, it has been the real, really the, the game changes and how to uh, to, to reach some of the communities and also to, to, to use the communities during the, the, the COVID-19 vaccine to, to address some of the misconceptions. One of APHF's successes was the mobilization of resources that helped different African countries weather the COVID-19 pandemic. In Eswatini, APHF worked with Bapalali Eswatini Red Cross Society to reach citizens across the country with important prevention information. Uh, when it comes to COVID-19, we were mainly focusing on uh, passing uh, uh, awareness raising and messages uh, to the people. Uh, we have about 5,000 uh, volunteers uh, countrywide. We then wanted to make use of uh, that volunteer network to pass messages uh, to the people because surely we, we wanted uh, everybody uh, to get the messages about, about COVID. We were focusing more on a door-to-door -door campaign. We did have radio programs that were being done by the government, but you find that there's some areas that people don't listen to the radio or they don't have radio stations. But because Red Cross volunteers, we are everywhere in the country and we, we are based in the communities. So it was easier for people to access information 
from the people that they know, people that they trust, who are within their communities, who are part of themselves. Initially, when the project started, it was at the height of COVID. Everyone was worried and there was a lot of misinformation. People were saying a lot of different things about COVID. Like, uh, for instance, when we talk of um, the injection, others would just tell us this is uh, um, one way which is used by the whites to make sure that uh, the population of Africans is being decreased. Some of, they have the myth of this COVID. They said, we have to use the traditional timbita. I don't know how to call timbita in, in, in English. They use timbita to remove COVID. Some, some of them, they use alcohol to remove COVID. So we just try to, to correct the myth that no, COVID, it's not all about, uh, we have to go to the hospital so that they will give you treatment. We trained 200 volunteers as a national society on how everyone can do COVID prevention, what to do when someone has tested positive in the family, that's the education that they would be giving to their families or in the houses, the homesteads that we were visiting. So uh, the signs and symptoms of COVID, how to tell and what steps to take should you, you find that someone in the family has symptoms. After testing what happened and those that were being treated at home to ensure that everyone had access to the treatment and they were taking the treatment, we trained them and they were given equipment thanks to the funding from our sponsors, Africa CTC and Africa Public Health Foundation. We were able to buy equipment for our volunteers for protection. We, they had masks, they have thermometers, they had sanitizers, and they had all the right tools to, to, to administer the questionnaires when they went out there. Some of the, they welcome us very well. They also like what we were, told, we were teaching them about. We, or some of the community members were not welcoming us very well. They chase us with the dogs. If they don't want us very well in, in their homestead, they, will, they allow dogs to come after us. So it wasn't easy collecting data. Some of the households would allow you to, conduct the, to collect the data from them, though some would still stand and say, um, we don't want anything to do with anything. Uh, the total number of homesteads that we visited in the country are about 15,000 households that we visited. So the number of people that we were, founding, we were finding in each household could differ from five, seven, two, three. So we did reach quite a number of people. Coming to uh, COVID-19, um, before um, our partners could help with the funding, we had to close our clinic because four of our nurses had uh, COVID-19, conducted COVID-19, and we, we had to close the clinics because there were only two nurse volunteers who were not able to operate the clinic alone. So we had to close. So after, um, after recovering from that, we were lucky to get funding um, from Africa CDC and African Public Health uh, Foundation. Yes, we were able to vaccinate all our nurses and staff. As we are speaking, we are all fully vaccinated and we, we, we hope uh, we, we, we will never conduct a uh, COVID-19 and if by, by chance we conduct it, the severity will be old in that much. The, what we are here for is to uh, uh, run partnerships, is to create a partnership, to facilitate partnership, mobilize resources for the priorities of Africa CDC. And the Africa CDC does not deal with emergencies only.
uh, deals with the overarching aspects of public health issues in Africa, including the strengthening of the institutions which are uh, uh, mandated by each country to deal with the public health uh, uh, programs, particularly dealing with the emergencies and, the, uh, and the pandemics. So we have to see the wide picture, uh, the overall picture in terms of the programs of Africa CDC, and we have to mobilize resources. We did that perspective beyond emergency. In Zambia, APHF supported the efforts of AMREF, who worked with community health workers in stopping the spread of COVID-19. AMREF, uh, since the onset of COVID, has been partnering or collaborating with the Ministry of Health to respond, to support the COVID-19 response. And so in a number of avenues, AMREF Health Africa has also been working with Africa CDC to ensure that um, the Republic of Zambia is supported in the appropriate manner. And one of the ways that this was done was through the funding from Africa Public Health Foundation, where AMREF uh, Health Africa received funding to support the Ministry of Health um, in a number of areas. Um, we supported the, the Ministry of Health um, in strengthening our COVID-19 programs in 50 low-performing districts. And the thing that we saw actually is that these, none of the districts that were um, in the 50 low performing um, at the time were uh, the major uh, provincial capital districts. All of them weren't, uh, all of them were rural districts, which uh, showed the vaccine inequity in terms of access amongst communities. The project supported about 4,500 community health workers to be able to do social mobilization for the vaccination. and. Uh, also, to, this was mainly to really look at the issues of the needs that are on the ground, to be able to refer our people to get vaccinated. And so we saw also those community health workers being a critical, playing a critical role as the gatekeepers in the community in encouraging people to get vaccinated. In 2021, I was able to mobilize COVID-19. Omulande <laughs> So after so the biggest thing was what is our strategy going to be and we work for communities but in this case we worked for and with communities and our entry point uh, was our community health workers. So from the time that COVID had emerged as, as a facility we have managed to vaccinate people from 32% to 50% now at the facility and in the community. With that being said, at least the numbers have reduced, the COVID cases have reduced, and then we, we, we even have people who are willing to come and get vaccinated at the facility and in the community. So it has been an ongoing process. And uh, I would say the response from the community and the response from the facility as health workers who are working in hands to, you know, to mitigate uh, the COVID uh, virus.
hani ya COVID ne amba kwa uja bantu une na kuti balasishe akavilikisha tena ni nene zoka mama wa na mbupita mo door to door kamba kwa uja kune na kuti tiendira senyele tisati tukoka na yai kuti tutandizike muka kana kula samanyele tine kuti kwa la kwa bani kini kuchipata la kumka ni lani muka lutali ni mama bantu pakumba tetyo beko nda kuni na uta tira se mama yake ne benzo kana wakaka na kala papi te two days ni pitira posoti kana zote pasa maybe seven days kuti tipita mo means kala basi ni kapitira mo ni kamba wa uja bara bantu benzo mweisha no lasa so munga mo no bari olasa na to onto tia la boko na inu lokoten I think APHF adds a lot of value from being an agile foundation from being a fully transparent foundation and from being independent from implementing partners. So APHF is really, really important to Africa CDC and the donors in that way. We can think more creatively, be more innovative and streamline funding for Africa CDC and for the donors. That's what's really important about APHF and that's why it's really important that we continue to strengthen it. Uh, I think this is the way we should proceed that uh, we have to get the continent to take control of its own affairs and manage its own affairs in, in order to progress. Uh, and, uh, if you leave uh, your destiny in the hands of uh, someone else, definitely it will be harder uh, to achieve your objectives. And the direction the continent is taking, I think, should be uh, uh, commended and uh, the, the leaders should be encouraged to do even more. Uh, particularly at the country level to make sure that the, what is the plan for that country is being followed and it is being implemented. This is the main issue. And all the partners collaborating with the African institutions, with the countries themselves, to really understand this and be supportive and be guided by the plan of that country and respect the leadership of the country in setting the direction of the plan. If things go this way, I'm sure we will succeed. That's what we need from the partners. So when the partner want to engage with Africa CDC, need to, to see uh, the, the, the core function of the Africa CDC, the new public health orders, how we can support the, the country to build uh, the strong, health institution, how we're going to work with the country to build a very strong workforce in change with the uh, uh, community healthcare workers as a foundation and, and, and as it, that's the point to start the health security knowing that there will be no health security unless we invest heavily on the community, equip them, train them with the skill that they truly need and how to lead, leave no any community behind and use their expertise that they, they've been doing. And this is a call that we've been doing, it's working. Africa CDC during the, uh, the COVID has more than 12 partnerships, which are good example. Uh, this is have changed life and they serve life. And we are so proud with the work that we did together with the partnership in line of uh, the African Union uh, and the head of the state, so the expectation to have uh, the, the health agency for the contents. Africa Public Health Foundation, we are working towards a healthy, productive, and prosperous Africa.